Oh, hey, what's up? Mm. I don't have any introduction, so I'm just gonna tell you that this video is going to be me complaining about why I hate art so bad. Since Newton's third law states that for every good artist there is an equal, opposite, irritating, and subsequently terrible asshole, I thought I'd illustrate some of the reasons why I think art is just stupid, for the most part, and why art teachers should be called people who are paid to ruin the work of others. There's that Doctor Who episode where Da Vinci gets to hear some decrepit old art critic talk about how nice his art is, and then has what appears to be a nervous breakdown because he was a crazy person and they are prone to doing that. But what we don't get to see are all the little interactions that that old man has with other people who are at the art gallery, where he attempts to explain what each piece of Da Vinci's work means, probably gets it wrong, and then eventually Da Vinci just comes up behind him with a wire and strangles him until he's not breathing anymore. And that's because if Leonardo heard even a single misinterpretation of his work, he would probably shit himself in anger. This is why trying to tell people what art represents is counterproductive and defeats the purpose entirely. Alright, has someone ever given you a food or drink and while you're trying to experience it, they say, it tastes like this, doesn't it? And then your brain immediately goes, you know, as a matter of fact, it does. Like, why do people feel the need to try and tell others what things taste, smell, look, or sound like? Like, imagine if I came up to you and I punched you right in the face. At no point would I need to also say, that feels like a punch in the face, doesn't it? Perceiving as a pretty basic human ability, I feel like I shouldn't need to tell anybody how to do that. And that person who just gave you the perfect answer for what that food or drink tasted like has destroyed any opportunity you might have had to experience it yourself. And this robbing of your chance to interpret something independently is an art teacher's entire job. And they'll show you a piece of some kind and then tell you what it means, effectively ruining any chance you had of analyzing it yourself. Their job is to ruin flavors for others, and then grade those people on whether or not they agree enough. You can't tell someone how to feel a thing. And here is a painting of a pot of flowers. It evokes memories of the springtime and ideas of love and new beginnings. Well, my mom choked to death on a pot of flowers. Now she was vacuuming the living room when she tripped on the cord and fell face first onto the coffee table with her mouth wide open. An entire pot of flowers and the pot went directly down her throat. So no, actually this painting reminds me of my dead mom. Then the kid gets an F because it happened last week and he's still grieving. Well, let's talk about certain genres of art for a second, like some kinds of abstract art, which could also be known as whatever the fuck I want it to be, what is that, or no matter what you say, you're right. A lot of abstract art, while great concepts in principle, in practice quickly turn into a tsunami of shit. For every revolutionary idea, there are six or seven dill holes who trick the world into liking a piece of dry trash. There's Andy Warhol, which, first off, anybody who looks that much like a clothing store mannequin should not be trusted. He's well known for depicting things that people see on a daily basis, which is alright when you think about it, but then you realize that you're paying money to see a thing that you could go to the grocery store and see for free. Wallpapering soup cans and now he's dead and his work continues to be worth millions because he got famous showing people the most boring aspects of everyday life. Jackson Pollock, the alcoholic who spills shit everywhere and calls it a masterpiece. He's essentially a bumbling scientist. I wish I could get paid to drink on the job and be clumsy with chemicals. And then there's that asshole who stuck a bunch of colorful rectangles on a canvas separated by black lines, creating what's basically the world's first Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Comic books and graphic novels are even worse because they have onomatopoeias, so-called perfect descriptors of the sounds they represent. Because who doesn't love being told what a thing is supposed to sound like, instead of having to shoulder the burden of using their imagination? There's collage artists, which, if you don't know what that is, basically people are paid money to spill garbage on a previously valuable piece of paper. Ah yes, this grouping of just shit you found, it seems to have an environmental message. Yes, and that message is, why litter when you can Elmer's glue your trash together and sell it to an idiot? But Jay, you've got a pirate flag, tiki masks, movie poster, and all kinds of other random art hanging on the walls in your basement. Yes, I do. But the difference is, I'm not trying to sell any of this for the same price as a small boat. My point is, don't let the intangible external aspects of a work of art, such as its popularity or the interpretations of others, determine its real-world importance or monetary value. And, if you want to see how silly and gullible your friends are, take them to an art gallery and see how many times they agree with whatever the curator gets paid to say. And I realize the hypocrisy that's inherent in telling people how to appreciate art in a video about how you can't tell people how to appreciate art. But hey, a hypocrite is just when someone does bonus attack damage to a hippopotamus. So we're okay. Be sure to like and subscribe and everything else that every other YouTuber tells you to do. I'm gonna walk this way now. You see my hand? I really hope not. That was really convincing.